Hi, this is Patty McCord, and you're joining me with Sachin on the Ochakte Show. Go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Ochakte Show. I'm your host, Sachin Sayal, and I'm a 16 year old award winning entrepreneur from the Bay Area. If you're new here, this is a talk show or podcast where I interview entrepreneurs and inspiring individuals from all walks of life so we can learn from their stories and level up ourselves. The purpose of this show is to inspire you to go for it, which is what Ochakte means. Hey guys, this interview is brought to you by Transition. That's T-R-A-N-S-I-Z-I-O-N.com. They're the leading college counseling and test prep company in the nation. Transition helps high schoolers with the entire college planning process. If you're a freshman or sophomore, they'll assist you with finding internships and building an incredible college profile. And for juniors and seniors, they'll help you with finding the best colleges, college essays, timelines, and telling your story. Transition will help you achieve your college dreams Reach out to Jason Patel at jason at transition.com to find out more. And now, on to the Ochakte Show episode. Today's special guest is Patty McCord. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Let me tell you some more about her. So, Patty is a human resources consultant and executive. She was the chief talent officer at Netflix. She joined Netflix in 1998. Her path at Netflix started with her working with Reed Hastings at Pure Software. Um, Patty brings the Silicon Valley concepts of fresh ideas and innovation and applies them to rethinking the way we work. She challenges norms and invites us to reconsider the idea of best practices. So, welcome to the Ultra yeah, Fish Show. How's it I'm going? I'm excited to be here on this rainy day. Nice. What's new and exciting for you? This piece of art on the wall. I just recently got that, so that's kind of exciting for me. And other than that, hanging out with my dog. Nice. Glad to hear that. So let's start with the first question. You know, from my audience, most of, our most of us are teens, so I don't think that many people know, but what does a human resources consultant do? Um, I wrote a book, so yeah, let's, we'll that. go back a little bit. So I wrote a book about my experience at Netflix, mm -hmm. and then I did a lot of talks around the world. Um, and now I mostly work with, I work with a lot of female um, CEOs mm -hmm. um, because I don't have that many other people to talk to. <laughs> and I just walk in and I talk to teams about what they could do differently and how they might think about work differently. Got it. So how did you get, you, you told me this, but for people that don't know, how did you get involved in Netflix? And like, when exactly did you become the chief talent officer? Mm, let's see. I worked at, with Reed at another company. Mm -hmm. And so uh, early Netflix, you probably don't know this because you're too young, but early Netflix was sending DVDs in the mail. Mm -hmm. And you signed up for the service and you ordered your DVDs on the website and they came to you in the mail. So Reed, this is a true story. Reed called me up at two in the morning and he said, um, hey, I'm gonna go join Netflix and run the company with Mark. There was a co-founder mm -hmm. and I said, okay, why are you telling me this at two o'clock in the morning? And he said, I want you to come too. And I said, nope, not going. It's the dumbest idea I ever heard. Nobody else in the world has a DVD player. This is really stupid. What do you have, like 40 people? You don't even need me around. And I'm, you know, I'm working part-time. My kids know my name. Why would I do this? Yeah. And he said, well, um, we could build the company we always dreamed of. And I said, ooh, do I get anything I want? <laughs> and so I'm going to swear here, I'm warning you. So I said, no bozos, no assholes. Okay. And he said, yeah, let's do it. And so it was a deal I couldn't refuse. Wow. So it was actually 2 a.m. when he called you? What was your first reaction to that? It was Reed. Uh, <laughs> He's the only person that called yeah, me. Yeah, I saw that in your book and he said something like, oh, some, someone's normal or someone's not. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, yeah. What, what are you doing at 2 in the morning? Yeah, I said, I'm sleeping, I'm normal. Yeah, I'm I saw that in your book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Like, what was your role as CTO and what was your favorite part and what was your worst part of the job? Well, he hired me at his last company and hired me at this company because my background is recruiting. Mm -hmm. So a lot of HR people come from more of a psychology background mm -hmm. or a therapy or training mm -hmm. or teaching. A teaching, actually, I had done some of, but um, it was because I was really good at interviewing and hiring talent. And so what we wanted to do at Netflix in particular was not have a very big company. We wanted it to be pretty lean and we wanted the right people in the right places at the right time. Okay. That, I love that part um, and I love interviewing um, and meeting new people. Um, saying goodbye was harder in the okay. beginning, but I became really good at it. So I call myself the queen of the good goodbye. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's a cool name. Yeah, well, the, the, what I learned over time was that um, saying goodbye is hard, surprising people with bad news is. 
So my rules for saying goodbye were that you couldn't be surprised mm -hmm. and you had to keep your dignity. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that be long before we realized it wasn't going to work out, you knew it might not. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I learned how to be good at it. Yeah, so you know, on your book, it even says on the top from the co-creator of the Netflix Culture Deck. Yeah. Can you talk about what that is? And I think it's been viewed over 15 million times. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't yeah. it? I and mean, it's literally a PowerPoint deck. Okay. So how it, how it came about was Reed thinks in um, PowerPoint because he likes the, um, the, the model of, you know, titles and subtitles. <laughs> right? yeah. he's, he's very logical. He's an engineer, okay. right? Yeah. So... Um, what we decided to do differently at Netflix was not let the culture just evolve, mm -hmm. but to write it down. Got it. Right, to write down the things that we thought were important in people. Um, you know, we wanted to have people with integrity and honesty and that were willing to talk to each other instead of talk behind their backs. Yeah. And so we just started writing that stuff down. So the first part of it is Reed said, let's do an offsite and talk about values. And I said, let's not. <laughs> Because we got a product to build, we got things to do, and it's just a waste of time writing down a bunch of stuff that doesn't mean anything, right? I will write down behaviors, though. Like, if I, I find out that you're dishonest, I don't want to work with you, okay. right? Yeah. So that part of that deck, which was literally a slide deck, um, we rewrote six times in the years that I was there. But what we used it for was we used it for orientation when new people came. So Reed and I would meet with groups of five or ten people when they first started and we'd be in a room like this and we'd go through the PowerPoint deck and we'd say this is what you can expect when you work in Netflix. So another Reed's story. Um, we're driving to work together because we commuted, we yeah. carpooled together and he said, hey, I met this amazing woman last night with the coolest company. It's called SlideShare mm -hmm. and you can put PowerPoint presentations online. I'm like, Great idea. I wish I had thought of that. Yeah. I said, I wonder what people are going to put out there. And he said, Oh, I put the deck up. I'm like, you did what? Without your permission? It did, yeah, I just because oh. like I did it this morning. I'm like, oh, no, you can't do that. You're going to scare away all of our potential candidates because it was pretty, you know, it was pretty straightforward. And he said, Only the ones we don't want. Oh. <laughs> and what happened was because that was out there, you know, that you could read about what it was like to work there. Overnight, it changed the way we interviewed. Mm -hmm. So we didn't just talk about your technical capabilities. We said, you know, what are you your best? And, you know, what makes you crazy about other people? And we started talking more in the interview about the way people worked, not just what they knew. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, like, industries today. Like, what talent do you think they look for? And what are some of the challenges that people are facing right now? You know, I don't look at it that way at all. Oh, okay. um, and it's partly because of my background as a recruiter. I'm more of a matchmaker. Oh. So, like, um, people say we only want A players, right? Well, you only want A players that know how to make frozen foods if that's your industry, right? You don't need a software engineer necessarily who's the top of the game doing AI, right? Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to find out in your team what are all the positions, right? I really liken it to a sports team, which is what do we need to somebody to know how to do? Here's my algorithm for success. Okay. Is what you love to do that you're extraordinarily good at doing something we need someone to be great at? Wait, can you say that again? I'm going to say it again. Yeah. Is what you love to do okay. that you're extraordinarily good at doing mm -hmm. something we need someone to be great at? But wouldn't that be you, the person? No, but like say, um, you know, I'm interviewing somebody for a, a design position. Okay. But what they really want to do is write a novel, right? So it's not the right, it's not that you're not a good novelist. I just don't need a novelist. I need yeah. a designer, right? So I always say to start, begin with the end in mind. If your team was amazing and they were doing incredible work, on time, with quality, everybody else in the company's like, oh, such and Steve has killed it. What would be occurring then that's not occurring now? Mm. Right? And give me a time frame. That's the other thing people, someday we'll be, you know, walking on Mars, okay, Tuesday or, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? So six months out and then work backwards, right? This is what it would look like if it was amazing. And then when you work backwards, then you say, okay, who's on the team now? Where are the gaps? And that's who you buy. Got it. Let's talk more about your book, Powerful. What was your favorite part of writing that book and what inspired you to write that book? 
oh, people have been bugging me about it forever because of the culture deck. Right? Oh, I was saying, you should write a book. You yeah, you should write a book. book. You should yeah. write a book. You should write a book. And then people would hire me as a consultant, and they'd take the culture deck and print it and say, we want to do this. And I'd say, well, you know, it took us 10 years to write that thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, years. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and that's not the kind of company you have. You don't, you can't be Netflix. you got to be who you are. Mm -hmm. Right? So I kept having people say, but how, but how, but how, right? Like, I would do a talk, and afterwards, typically HR people would come up and go, you know, you make so much sense. It's so logical. I, we, uh, we can't. We can't do it because we're too hierarchical. Or we can't do it because we're regulated. We can't do it because we're our CEO. We can't do it. And I'm like, if you don't try, you'll never be able to, you'll never be able to do it. And so what I did was I realized that my way of working was so influenced by the innovators that I worked with. Like uh, the iPad, the iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Jobs called, Steve Jobs called Reed and said, we have this new miraculous device that's going to be able to play video on it. Mm -hmm. And we'd like Netflix to be one of the apps on the video, right? You're like, oh my God, that would be amazing, yeah. right? So I walk into my product team meeting and I'm like, um, have you seen it? Have you seen the new iPad? It is a miracle. I mean, you just swipe it. It's, uh, I, you know, the kid next to me at the restaurant, he was watching SpongeBob. He can't even read. <laughs> and I said, oh, I can't wait until I walk into my media room and swipe it. And they're like, um, oh, we won't make you get up. And so they start like riffing like jazz musicians. No, you'll sit down and you'll have a mood meter and you put your thumb on your iPhone and they'll say, oh, Patty, are you sad? And instantly a comedy will play, right? <laughs> and I thought, someday they'll do this, right? I'm gonna, someday there's gonna be a room full of people that are gonna be able to do this. How come they get to have all the fun? So then I just went back to my job and I started throwing away stupid stuff that didn't matter. So what type of stuff was it? A lot of rules, a lot of very, a lot of permissions, mm -hmm. right? So it seemed kind of silly to me that if I had somebody who had a PhD in math from Cambridge, mm -hmm. that they would have to go to somebody in finance to ask for permission to spend more than five thousand dollars. They knew what greater than five thousand was. Yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> and the person in finance didn't have any clue what they were spending it on. So I thought, well, what's the reason we do this, right? Why do we get permission to do things? Well, you get permission to do things, particularly around money, because you've budgeted for it and you want to stay within your budget and you run, want to run the company efficiently. That's why you do it, right? But that doesn't help you be more efficient. It slows you down, right? I don't want my my software engineers to be thinking about how to trick finance into spending ten thousand dollars. I want them to think about what they're going to spend that ten thousand dollars. Great, right? So I had to over time hire different people in finance, and they had to sit with the engineers, and they had to have a role as a member of the team to say, "Hey, by the way, we budgeted for five thousand dollars a person, but our run rate six. What do you guys want to do about that? And then we figure out how to spend the money. Got it. Right? So, I mean, that's an example of something every company does. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's yeah. That's really cool that you did all that stuff. And I, I would want to be do what you did, but I mean. It was scary. It was really scary. I mean, at this point, I was a professional, right? Yeah. So, like, when I got rid of tracking paid time off, I we were a really small company and I stood on a chair and I said, okay, everybody, all the lawyers say that we're going to apply this differently and you're going to take more time off than me and I'm going to sue the company because you got more time off than me and I'm a woman and that's what it is, right? <clears throat> or they say either nobody will work, everybody will just stay home because we're not keeping track of whether or not they're working, or everybody will work all the time and never take any time off. So those are all the things that people have told me will happen if we do this, if we get rid of tracking this, right? So I'm going to do, you're going to get sued, all these bad things are going to happen. And I said, but I think you guys are kind of grown-ups and you know what we have to do and you know what our competition is. And so how about we try it for six months? And if it, the whole place goes to hell in a handbasket, then we'll go back and do what everybody else does and we'll call it best practice. Got it. Because best practices really means 
what everybody else does. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up here, these are the last two questions that I asked all my guests. Okay. The first one is, what's your best advice for teens? Oh, just to try a lot of different things. Don't decide what you're good at yet. It doesn't matter, right? You know, it's. I think it's a better learning to decide what you hate. Really? Yeah, in some ways, it's like, you know, oh, I don't think you do this, I hate this. It's like, so... Oh, so you know what you... Okay. So, so you know what you, so you don't, don't want to... Yeah, yeah, right? Like, um, it, you want to be an engineer because it pays well. Well, not if... It doesn't pay well if you're not any good at it. Exactly. <laughs> so find out what you love to do. And, and what you love to do is like that end of the day when you get on your bike or in the car or whatever. You know, good. That's your passion, right? So look, but but try the hard things that you're scared of too, because you might be better at than you think. Got it. And then this is the last question of the day. Uh, what was your favorite part of being on the Ochakte show? Oh well, just having you over to my house today. It's yeah, nice I love this place. Here. Thanks for inviting me here. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming. Anything else you'd like to say to my audience before we end? No, just keep doing it. Keep like, doing it. Keep doing it. Just just get out there and try new stuff. Try scary stuff, and all you have to do is live through it. Got it. Well, guys, I think that was an amazing episode. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.